I'm using the charts of celebrities rather than, you know, my aunt who lives in the Southern Hemisphere or, you know, anybody else's daughter or cousin because everybody knows celebrities, you know, and we don't, we don't, you don't know my relatives or anybody else's relatives. So it just makes it less biased. It, it makes it fairer. I hope everybody can see that. Okay, now I'm not trying to convince anybody either way. I'm just hopefully going to present the evidence in, in a fair way. I'm going to present both the Northern Hemisphere chart and the Southern Hemisphere weighted chart and I'm just going to let you, you know, make up your, your mind. So here are some examples of the six sign or dual mirror zodiac. And what I've done is, first of all, I've presented the uh, Astro Deans chart. And as many astrologers know, Astro Deans or astro.com is a wonderful website. It's based in Switzerland. And if you haven't been there, really, I, I recommend it as a a very comprehensive astrology website where you can find, uh, you can calculate charts, um, it's got articles, um, it's very informative. So once again that's www.astro.com. So first of all I'm going to look at the the regular chart calculated by Astro and then I'm going to present the reverse chart, which I've done manually with Windows software, and I've reversed the signs, and I've kept the same degree of the house cusp as the northern chart, and, and I've had to do it by hand because as yet there's, there's no program that does this, and quite frankly, I don't think there will be. You know, I, I don't think that we're going to see... Um, I'm, I don't think that we're going to see these reverse charts in, in software. I think we're just going to have to, you know, do it ourselves and, or imagine it. So that, the first person we're going to look at is uh, Eva Perron, uh, wife of uh, Juan Perron, and she was born May 7th, 1919 in Buenos Aires, Argentina and coordinates are 58 west, 27, 34 south. You can see on this uh, Wikipedia map here that that 34 degrees south of the equator. So here's her regular chart and we can see that she has a tropical Taurus Sun, Mars, an Ascendant, and then here's her um, reverse chart, and they become more weighted towards the Scorpio polarity in the dual sign of Torio, all right, in Argentina where she was born. The square to Moon and Saturn in Aquarius rather than Leo corresponds, again, this is just my opinion, all right, you have to make up your own mind. It works well with Peron's political involvement with Argentina's trade unions as wife of the president, where she fought on behalf of labor rights. You know, Aquarius is a sign that's very much about social justice. She also ran the Ministries of Labor and Health, campaigned for women's suffrage, and founded and ran the nation's first large-scale female political party, the Female Peronist Party. This passion and combativeness, skill in politics, and ability with other people's money seems fitting for a personality weighted towards Scorpio rather than Taurus, as the latter is usually more concerned with building up wealth for oneself rather than distributing it to others. The Scorpio polarity also fits well, in my opinion, with the secrecy she maintained about her real birthday and even the secrecy about her death. Well, you know, you might say, well, all women are secretive about their age, which is true. 
Um, but Peron was, I, I think, especially secretive about it. She claimed she was born three years later than the day of her birth certificate. And when her husband, Juan, was overthrown in 1955, Eva's preserved body was taken to a secret grave in Italy where it stayed until 1971. Peron was mourned with such grief by the people of Argentina after her death and became a legend in her own country and throughout the world, even inspiring British composer Andrew Lloyd Webber and lyricist Tim Rice to write a musical about her called Evita, a name she was fondly called by her countrymen and women. So it's almost as if, to me, she continues to live after physical death, and this would fit well with the Scorpio archetype. Another correlation to Scorpio, the sign of sex, is that her sun conjunct Mars is the apex of a T-square involving moon conjunct Saturn and Uranus, which would rule unexpected or socially challenging events. Now, Eva was born out of wedlock and was sexually, unfortunately, she was sexually assaulted as a young girl. She was very sensitive to the plight of illegitimate children in Argentina and had the law changed so that these children were not stigmatized. The challenging aspects to Peron's southern hemisphere Scorpio sun would correlate with the possible predisposition to weaknesses of the reproductive area of anatomy. And Eva died of u uterine cancer. So that to me does suggest quite a heavy Scorpio waiting. Okay, now we're going to move on to Nelson Mandela. We're going to go over to South Africa. And Mandela was born July 18, 1918, in Umtata, South Africa, which is 31 South, 35, which you can see on the map here. And so here's his regular Astrodienst chart, and then the reversed one in black. So in his reversed horoscope, his regular Cancer Sun would become more polarized towards the Capricorn polarity of this dual zodiac. And to me, Capricorn seems fitting for a man who was so interested in politics and who was to ultimately change the oppressive regime of apartheid in South Africa. You know, cancer is the sign of the family, and we could argue that, yes, his regular chart, he would have an interest in his country, patriotism, and that's true. So I'm, I'm not saying, you no, know, one is correct and one isn't. Um, could definitely see a bit of both here. What's intriguing to me is that the sign Capricorn rules the skin and the, the purely outer appearance of the physical level of experience. And Mandela freed people's minds from the bondage that we sometimes put ourselves and others into if we judge them by outer appearances. So he was a, a, a great, um, great figure in, in South African civil rights. And I think that kind of esoterically that, that fits with the, uh, the, the meaning of, of Capricorn ruling the skin. In Mandela's southern weighted horoscope, which would have quite a lot of weight because it's, his birthplace is 31 degrees south of the equator, Saturn and Neptune are in Aquarius, sign of social justice. Saturn can indicate patience and endurance, and Mandela had to wait a long time for his ideal of social equality, a fact reinforced, if this rectified time is correct, by the astrological symbolism of these planets being square to his moon in the 12th house of confinement. Now, I just want to add, if I haven't stated it already, that when we reverse the signs, the house placements don't change. So in both his regular northern chart and the, the southern weighted chart, he has um, the moon in the 12th house, 
which I think is is correlated very well to the was it twenty seven years he he spent in prison. Okay, before we analyze our equator person, I'd just like to recap on the subjects that we've covered so far. So we're talking about the zodiac in the Earth's southern hemisphere. Should it be reversed or should we just use the same zodiac signs that we use in the northern hemisphere and that we've been using for thousands of years? So this is all about, it's a debate really about whether we should keep the old way or try something new. And we've covered, um, we've just analyzed the problem, we looked at the Earth's seasons, we looked at how the tropical zodiac signs were derived from uh, Ptolemy and Earth's precession. We looked at how the zodiac signs got their names from agriculture and we looked at how it would be possible to reverse the zodiac using a six sign zodiac so we didn't get a, a conflict at the equator. Then we looked at polarity and how polarity occurs everywhere in nature. We looked at some scientific evidence and we're just beginning to look at some astrological evidence. We uh, looked at the charts of um, Eva Peron, of um, Nelson Mandela. I've got J.R.R. Tolkien at my website. I've got Julian Assange, and now we're going to look, and they were all born in the Southern Hemisphere, um, now we're going to look at somebody that was born on the equator. So according to this theory, they should be equally balanced, equally weighted between their Northern sign and their so-called Southern sign. And that person is Richard Dawkins biologist, skeptic, atheist, and strong proponent of Darwinian evolution, Richard Dawkins was born in Nairobi, Kenya, which is one degree south from the equator. He would therefore, according to the mirror zodiac, be just a, a minute amount away from being equally balanced between an Aries and a Libra sun, or an Ariba as Tim Lyons would call him. And the rest of his planets would also share equal weights of opposite sign polarity. Now, in the charts I've put up, both these charts are what's called hypothetical noon charts. Are they noon? No, dawn charts, actually. Hypothetical dawn charts, because we, we don't know what time Richard Dawkins was born, so we don't know his ascendant. So we've made the sun the ascendant, basically. And we've put, you can see there's actually no, no house uh, cusps in the Astro Dean's chart. And in the reverse chart, I've just made the houses, whole houses. So the ascendant would be zero Libra, the, the second house cusp would be zero Scorpio, etc. Okay. So in Dawkins' northern latitude, Aries Sun, that's quite noticeable, as I'm sure everybody will, will see and everybody agrees, because he's a, a trailblazer for the facts of biological evolution, as shown by scientific evidence. And he doesn't suffer anybody with religious or spiritual or non-evidence-based counter-arguments very easily. He can be quite combat combative as, as Aries are. He's also a leader in his career of biological research. But in my opinion, he also has a very partnership oriented side. You know, he gives his antagonists a good deal of open discussion and fairness. And, and I find him quite polite, actually. You know, I, I don't think that image of him being combative it is a hundred percent true you know I do see the Libran in him as well and the other big aspect for for Dawkins is his uh, conjunction of Saturn 
Jupiter and Uranus. Okay, and this this is the uh, sign of a, a great teacher. We see it also in um, a person who was born six months from him, John Lennon. You know, John Lennon was a musician, of course, and uh, the sign Taurus is the sign of music. But with with Richard Dawkins, the the Taurus um, can apply to the physical world. You know, he's he's a great proponent of um, biology. You know, the the, the physical world, how how things grow, and of course, physical evidence. And the other person, the other very famous person with a Saturn-Jupiter-Uranus conjunction was Jesus of Nazareth. Um, he had it in Pisces, not Taurus, you know, com completely different message, but he still was a, a great teacher, a world teacher. Okay, so the Taurus placements in Dawkins' nor northern chart, or the chart that we, we usually think of, um, they correlate well to him being about the external world. But the Taurus polarity is equally balanced, according to this theory, the six sign zodiac, with Scorpio. And that sign describes how we all got here. And that's through sex. That's through sexual reproduction. You know, we've all got a mother and a father. So we all got here through, and all the animals and everything, all life got here through sexual reproduction. You know, apart from some plants and bacteria and unicelled organisms reproduced without it asexually. But evolution, anyway, depends on sexual reproduction and, and a, a crossing of the genes, you know, and when the, the genes combine, um, they mutate and that's how we get um, natural selection, which is the, the power horse behind evolution. So Dawkins' chart also shows an opposition between Venus in Pisces and Neptune in Virgo. And this opposition between Virgo and Pisces represents the balance between science and spirituality. And you might say, what? Dawkins is not spiritual. But, but actually, um, he, he is, the, the way I see it. Anyway, I don't know if anybody has read his book, Un Unweaving the Rainbow. But... Um, there's a lot of spirituality, or, or as he calls it, or, you know, at uh, dissecting the physical world. So when we swap these signs around so that Neptune is in Pisces and Venus in Virgo, we still have these signs, planets in opposition. Um, Dawkins also has an opposition between Mars in late Capricorn and Pluto in early Leo, which could be interpreted as an awareness of leadership, that's Leo, in the recognition of the scientific method. You know, uh, Dawkins is the leader in skepticism. He has been for the, the past 10 years or so. Sometimes he might come across as rather forceful, and that's Mars opposite Pluto, but more positively, he combines both poles to inject warmth and creativity, that's Leo, into his advocacy of the scientific method, that's Capricorn. Okay, now what happens if we swap those round so that Mars is in Leo and Pluto is in Capricorn? Well, then we could say, we could find a correlation and say that with the support of his rationally minded friends like the late Christopher Hitchens and Sam Harris and Daniel Dennett, they are arguing for a complete transformation, that's Pluto, okay, of the structure and organization of society, that's Capricorn, with a special focus on the science education of children, children's represented by Leo. And another skeptic I forgot to mention and great friend of Richard Dawkins is uh, Lawrence Krauss. And he said more or less exactly that. I saw him in a, a video just 
last week of Kraus um, talking about the Common Core and education, and he wasn't very talking about it very favorably, but he was talking about this transformation of education so that we teach children how to think with an, an emphasis on science. So really that they, they rely on evidence rather than um, beliefs.